Now we get set for Rio Wild of the United States and Anji Nioto of Japan. Anji Nioto, the eighth seed, as was Honda Yumiko. And of course, Rio Wild, the number one seed and number one in the world coming in here. See, that match this morning has changed what I'm going to say. Now, I'm not going to say, I'm going to be very careful what I'm going to say because normally we'd expect Rio's been virtually unstoppable this year as an individual winning every every single individual match he's competed in. He's, he's been the dominant figure in the sport this, this season, going back even to last year, too. Yeah, he's just incredible. So Rio Wild out of Pocatello, Idaho. His dad, D, back in the States watching. There's his lovely wife, Sherry, who will be coaching him. In fact, it's interesting because the last time she coached him, called out the Euros, was back in 2006 when he won a World Cup. And he, okay. called, he called that his most memorable moment in the uh, career that he's had in archery. Okay. So I was kidding with her on the bus uh, coming over this morning. I said, so every six years, you'll get to come to the World Cup Finals. He should bring her along more often, I think. She wanted to come to Tokyo. He gave her the choice. Paris next year, Tokyo this year. Okay. I'll take Tokyo, she said. <laughs> so she'll be calling out the arrows, and she'll be coaching him on. And I, do you think that uh, the match that Albina Laganova dropped earlier today hmm. caught the attention of Rio Wild? Yes, he would have paid attention to it. No, he's not going to let her affect him. Rio's, Rio's been around. I'm sure he's, uh, yeah, he would have acknowledged it and thought, yeah, that's not great, but I'm sure he can deal with that. His level has been so high this year. But we start off with a nine. Yeah, that's about as close as they come. So now here's Anji Nayoto, 48 years old, unranked. And he'll come up with an eight on his first Why shot. Yeah, and he wasn't happy with that either. But hopefully that's it. Got rid of the nerves. Hopefully you can just settle down. Sometimes a bad shot like that can just settle you down and make you realize, hey, come on. Now, real wild first shot has an asterisk by it, although it appears to us as though it's a nine. But he does come up with a ten on his second shot. And Nayoto. Is he dig? Did compete in two events in the World Championships last year, but did not medal. Answers with a 10. And Rio with another 10. So 29 points unofficially for Rio Wild here in the first end of the quarterfinals. And on the line, but that should be a nine. So okay. a two-point lead for Rio Wild. And you he's said he has been such a dominant figure. In the first three stages this year, Orchard he shot in eight events, Sanju. won the gold medal in seven of those events, Michael. The only silver was the Shang in Shanghai in the mixed team event. But other than that, he's been almost perfect. Yeah, I asked him about that, if he had a secret or what his plan was, and he's like, nope, I just hope it all continues the way it's been going. <laughs> See the target, hit the target, huh? <laughs> yeah. Simple he, as that. He does do one thing totally different to the rest of the field. His bow weighs over 10 pounds, physically in the hand, mass weight. We're not talking about the drawing weight for pulling the bow, but the actual physical mass weight of the bow is dramatically more than every, everyone else's. And I don't know whether that's his secret and everyone else should be trying it or whether it's just what works for him as an individual. But if I was a... If I was still shooting my compound on the world stage, I would be, sh as you can see, all of this stainless steel on the, on the end of his stabilizer, I would be adding some weight to my bow. He tells me he doesn't have to do any special training for that, but when he told me that, he also knew I was working for the press, and so maybe, maybe he does do some special training, but he doesn't want to make it public. But yeah, he's got a really heavy bow, and he says it just helps keep the dot on the center, which is what we're after here. Nine points. Obviously, there's some secret sauce that's working for Rio Wild. Even going back to last year, he has just been the dominant figure in men's compound archery. And he hopes to continue that here in Tokyo. Nine, nine on his shot to Let's start take. off the second end. Yep. See the adjustment. So that means he was obviously happy with the shot. Then he was surprised with its location. So he's going to just adjust his shot, adjust his sight to go with it. Anji Nayoto with a nine to start off this end. 
Followed it up with an eight. Now back to Rio Wild. And Wild is in the center ring. So his third bullseye in the first five shots. And Anji Neoto, who had to be inspired by the performance of Honda Yumiko, who upset Albina Laganova about an hour ago here. Yeah, it's not looking like he'll be able to cause the second Japanese upset of the day. But we never know. This match is still early on, and I must admit, for Rio, just to shoot two nines is quite uncharacteristic. So. Uh, of course, I asked Rio how he stayed sharp, and he competed in some smaller competitions yeah, over the past three months. But again, it has been a long, long time since these archers, the compound archers I'm talking about, not yeah. the recurve the archers. The recurves have been busy, They've I can tell busy. you They've been busy. Oh, yeah. So maybe, maybe this is going to help Danielle Brown, because she was also competing at the Paralympics with her compound bow. So maybe the fact that she's been on the world stage just literally two weeks ago, I guess that's no bad thing to come into a shoot like this. 57 out of 60 for Rio Wild. First on target number two. We're about to get back underway. Let's hear it for Anji San. 53 out of 60 for Anji Nioto. So a four point advantage for Rio Wild, despite the fact that he's not exactly on his game. Now, if he wants to win here and take the title, and I can assure you he does want to win here, he's going to have to just up his game just a little bit. But hey, early days, get settled in. One match at a time. Rio's bow looking pretty steady. Just a little sway. The result he was looking for. He's still adjusting something on his release aid, which is quite an odd thing to be doing in the middle of a match. He was adjusting it when he was talking to his to his wife, and he was just then going to adjust it again. It's quite a strange thing to be doing in the middle of a competition. I'll try and see if I can spot what he's doing. Well, whatever he's doing, it seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, we'll just let him keep doing it. Because what he could be adjusting is the sensitivity is of his release aid, how much movement he has to do before it will release the arrow. So maybe he thought it was too slow, too yes. fast, or maybe he just felt that he needed it to be different because he, he wanted a bit more of a surprise. But like you said, maybe he should just keep doing it and I should <laughs> leave him to it. They showed the heart rate just a moment ago. And both of these archers with a very low heart rate. Staying calm, staying cool. Rio coming back and discussing the situation with his wife, Sherry. They'll be moving into the new house. In fact, they're finishing it up right now, even as we speak, back in Pocatello, Idaho. Hopefully, uh, well, at least Rio hopes he can bring something else home to uh, decorate the house with. Yeah, and maybe some finances just to finish off the furnishings as well. The hometown favorite, Anji Neoto, quitting himself very well here, here in Tokyo as Rio checks the equipment. Very important to do that. You can't take it for granted. You've got to check the knocks. You've got to check the fletching. You've got to make sure everything's right. Especially when you're grouping as tight as Rio. It's quite possible that another arrow on the way into the target hits the previous arrow. And then if you've damaged the knock, which is the plastic device on the end of the arrow that clips it onto the string, even in the worst cases, the next time you shoot that arrow, that knock can just explode, and you end up with an arrow on the floor and zero points on the scoreboard, which uh, is not what we need in a situation like this. I mentioned it earlier. We saw it happen last year in Shanghai in stage four with Dimar Trillis of Canada. The knock on his arrow broke, and it hit the scoreboard, and that uh, changed that match a little bit. Well, I can give you some inside information on that. Well, would you, you please? Well, I've been told from other people who analyzed the video footage well after the event, because at the time we were told the knock broke, and that was why I went there, but they analyzed the video, and apparently his arrow was not sitting on his arrow rest. It had fallen off ah. the arrow rest and was just laying on the shelf of the bow. So that was more of a sort of technical error from uh, Dietmar himself than a, just a purely equipment thing. But uh, that was, uh, we didn't find it out until well past the event, obviously, because we 
the footage had to be found and analyzed. So analyzed, yeah. yes. So always check your arrows on the shelf. That's, <laughs> that's the rule number one. Sounds like an episode of CSI. Well, everyone, it was such a surprise. You don't expect these archers to miss the 10 very much, let alone miss the whole target and hit the timing clock. I mean, it's, it deserved a closer look. A closer inspection. I'm pleased to say the timing clock was fully functional afterwards as well. <laughs> Glad we had you on that story. Two tens to start off this end for both of these archers. Now an eight for uh, Angie Neoto. His chances of pulling this back is looking challenging. Especially if Rio keeps doing that. Good warm up for Real Wild, who we'll see in just a moment. He'll turn around right after this match, as will Angie Neoto, and they'll be back out here for the mixed team competition. Christy Collin will come back and rejoin Rio Wild, and Hondo Yumiko will come back as well. And we'll have the mixed team finals. That's a strong USA team. Which has won gold before. Yeah, absolutely. Three straight tens for Rio Wild. Real wild with a decisive. So Rio getting it dialed in now, getting adjusted, getting comfortable here in Hibiya Park in downtown Tokyo. Obviously Rio has been a top athlete for, for many years now, but it's only recently that he's actually turned full-time professional. So and I think maybe that accounts for the, the step up in his game because he's always been world class. He's, he's won titles before, but in the last sort of year... And Taking I'm, it to that next level. Yeah, I think he's just been able to win it he probably got the time to practice more, but more importantly, he probably hasn't got quite so much time pressure. He's been able to do his training and spend time with his family and have things done around the house. Because sometimes as an archer, with all of the traveling and all of the training, sometimes it can feel like the little small things at home build up. And mm -hmm. so maybe now that he's training full-time, full-time professional, he's just able to put things in perspective and make sure he's as prepared, as good as he can be to come here. That's an interesting point, Michael, because, uh, again, on the bus ride over, I was talking with him this morning, and he said, after this, I'm going to uh, take a little time off. I need that time. And so you do. Str striking that balance in your life is important in it, and it can translate, and I think it does translate into performance once you're back out here Absolutely. on the, the field of play. We often see archers, because they're so keen to reach the top, they just practice, practice, practice. And I used to do it myself and not even take a break, but it's really important at the end of the season, take one or two weeks, maybe even three, and just... Put the bow away. Put the bow away. Get away from the sport okay. and just reflect on the season and just relax, have fun. I know he, loved, he loves the doors, spending time with his children and just, yeah, chill out. Be a, be a dad for, for, for a change and not a, not, not a top archer. Two, sure the kids are up watching back home in Pocatello as dad fires another 10 to start off the fifth and final end. And appears to be in no danger of not moving on to the semifinals. Two, ten, nine points. Again, he's not happy with the shooting. The arrows aren't going in the center. And, uh, well, like you say, he can walk back out in a little while and have another chance. Wipe the slate clean and... Give it another go. Give it another go, which is more than a lot of athletes here <laughs> have the chance to do. There's no question about that. See, again, I think Rio was just getting his Allen keys out to do an adjustment. Two, ten, ten points. Look at the heart rate, 57. I'm assuming that's 57 beats per minute. I'm assuming that too as well. Again, I do not have my medical degree. I'm working on it. Neither do I. Studying on the internet every night. Uh, there's the victory, though, as Rio wraps it up, 145 and 136, and gets to uh, kiss his coach. Solid performance, and, uh, yeah, not all of us uh, want to come back and kiss our coach. <laughs> he definitely does, though. But Cherry Wild, she keeps things going on the home front and allows Rio to go out there and do what he does and does so well, and another victory and a big smile. On the face, it's good to see the smile on the face of both of these competitors. Yep. I think Rio considered that a little bit of warm-up, a little bit of a test. 145 is okay, looking at the other matches we've had here today, but I think he knows he wants to get up to the 148s, 149s, if he wants to make sure that he wins this title. And he knows he will have to step it up, but he has moved on to the semifinals, as has Peter Alzenga, Julio Ricardo Fierro,
and Braden Gelinty. So those are the four men we will see in the semifinals coming up later on, just a little bit later on.